of went on a major art supply shopping spree. So I'm going to share some of the things I bought. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Do you ever have one of those days where you're going through your art supplies and you realize you're out of almost everything? That happened to me when I was working on this oil painting and realized I'm out of so many colors of paint. I have so many of these tubes that there's like nothing in there and it's so old and the cap doesn't go on all the way so it's all dried up inside and I got a little frustrated so I went sort of crazy shopping. But not just on oil paints, I was out of everything. All of the stuff that I'm going to share with you, I will have links below in the video description. The first thing that I bought, these are mounted sanded paper that I love from working with Powder Blender. They're already mounted and it, so they're just so nice to work on. These ones are from Pro Art Panels. I got five that are eight by tens and five 12 by 16s. I mentioned to my friends over at Derwent that I really wanted to try some watercolor pencils. So they sent me a pack of 72. So this is not part of my shopping street free, but it did influence a lot of the things that I purchased to go with these. One of the things that I got to use with those pencils is this watercolor pad. This is actually the Fabriano Artistico Extra White hot press watercolor paper, but it's glued on the side. So you're supposed to be able, I believe, to paint right on the board. I really wanted this more for ink tints than the watercolor, but you know, I got a big pad of it, so we'll see how that goes. This one is a 14 by 20. I got this one from Blick.com. I've been saying for years that I wanted to fill up a sketch pad, only I never do, ever. So with those watercolor pencils, I thought it would be fun if I got a bunch of different pads to try out. The first sketchbook that I got is from Hobby Lobby. This one is a handmade watercolor book. Now, this paper is not one I would try personally to do something that was like a completed, beautiful, amazing project. I got this because it looked fun, honestly. I just like how the paper looks. I painted one thing in it so far, but the paper, it's very, very rough and it's very inconsistent. Like the glue on this page makes it so that this one doesn't open up as far as it should. It's extremely inconsistent which is kind of what I liked about it. It just looks so fancy. It's hard to get tiny detail in it. It's possible, but not great. The watercolor doesn't flow as much as I would like it to or as much as it does on some other papers, but it's just so fun. I don't care. It's the first journal that I honestly see myself completing just because I like how the paper looks so much. Knowing that that paper was super rough, it's kind of like drawing on a rock. I also wanted to get something that was a little bit smoother. This is a just kind of a regular watercolor pad. This one is a visual journal. This one also was from Hobby Lobby. This one I think is going to give me better results than the other one did, but it's not as fancy looking. So I got them both. You guys over on Instagram, when I shared the project that I did in the fancy watercolor book, said that you liked the moleskin books. So I went over to Amazon and ordered this one. This is a watercolor album that is also by a moleskin. This one I have a feeling is going to be my favorite. I'm probably going to fill the handmade paper one first, just cause I like how it looks so much before I start these ones. I got these little artist loft canvas pal panels. Now this is not something that I'm going to do fine artwork that I'm trying to sell, but it'll be great I think for doing live streams where I am giving away the finished painting. So these I thought would be kind of a fun thing. I got two packs of those. I went kind of crazy on paintbrushes. I got some paintbrushes at Michael's too. They had some sales that actually did make them very inexpensive. They were inex they were cheapy brushes anyway, but I got a few of those, which I've already put away. And I got an angled brush. And I think that's about all I got for brushes over at Michael's. But then the next day I went over to Hobby Lobby. They were having a 50% off. I think it was 50 or 40% off. I think it's 50% off their master's touch brushes. Now I'm not typically a fan of generic art supplies, but I do like the generic brushes from Hobby Lobby. These are the master's touch. I filled up on a bunch of synthetic hog hair brushes, tons of different angled brushes and filberts and I'm dropping half of these brushes. I also picked up the Simply Simmons extra large brushes, two of these. One of these is a burgundy synthetic while the other is a gold taflon. The gold taflon is a little bit softer whereas the burgundy synthetic one is a little bit more stiff. These ones I got to fill in the background for my acrylic paintings. I don't have any good big brushes so I think those should work nicely. Back to my Dick of Blick purchase. I'm just all over the place. I picked up some more of the Simply Simmons brushes, the, a couple of filberts and rounds. I got a set of sponges. I like this for getting different types of effects and kind of a faux finish for different things. And I have sponges here, but they have dog fur in them and it's just not working out for me. So I got a new pack. 
When I mix certain airbrush colors, or even if I just mix a lot of acrylic paint and I have extras, or I need to save some of it for later on, knowing I'm going to need that exact color again, I like these little bottles. These ones are from Hobby Lobby. They're the ones I've used in the past. I also picked up some with a different type of cap from Michaels. This one is kind of more of a plasticky rubber type that snaps on. These ones screw on. So I kind of wanted to see which one I like better. And the one from Michaels had a lot of different sizes, so I thought that was pretty convenient. So I bought a bunch of those too. I've always used Windsor and Newton for my masking fluid, but I decided to try this one by Grumbacher. This is Miskit Liquid Frisket. So I'll, be, I'll let you guys know how I like this one once I try it out. I got a few little cheapy metal sharpeners. I also ordered a wood comb sharpener. This is the wood cutter. I got this one on Amazon. This one doesn't give you a long point, so I don't really like it for colored pencil, but it's good for charcoal pencils where you don't want something to have a super, super long point because they tend to crumble. So got that one. I also got some refill blades for my other sharpeners. I all of my sharpeners right now are completely dull. Luckily, it's pretty hard to break a polychromo, so it's still been working, but it's definitely time to replace those blades. Another of my Dick Blick purchases, I got some new airbrush paint. This one is by Holbein. I got black, light green, blue green, which is kind of a turquoisey color, really pretty, and opaque white. I got these because they claim to be thin enough that you don't need to water them down like I do with the Createx. So if the finish is semi-flat and I like how that works, I may consider switching to these. I haven't tested them yet though, so I'm excited to see how this goes. Actually, by the time this video goes up, because it's going up in like a month after I record this, I will have my macabre that I've been working on. I'm going to try these for the background on that. It may or may not end well. One color that for some reason I've never purchased in oil paint, which is ridiculous because I use it so much in acrylics, is unbleached titanium white. I needed it so bad for so many parts of this painting and I didn't have it. So I had to keep mixing my own and it's a little bit of a pain. I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? So when I placed my order with Dick Blick, they were out of the Grumbacher that I wanted. So I bought some by Yulrecht. I may be saying that wrong. I got two of those just because I never want to run out of this color again. And then when I was shopping at Michael's, I ended up picking up the Grumbacher one that I actually really wanted. I'll have to let you know how I like the Ulrich ones because I've not tried these yet. When I start, first started oil painting, I mostly was using the Winsor & Newton Winton color. And over the last several years, I've been switching over to the artist oil color. When I first started painting, and I always told this to my students too, when you first start, you don't notice such a huge, huge difference, I don't think, between the Winton color and the artist color. These ones are considered more professional than the Winton color. The Winton color are good. It's a difference of pigment and the texture. These ones have a more consistent, kind of a softer texture that I really, really love like, but when I first started off, I didn't even notice that. So if you're just getting started in oil, the Winton color are just fine. I still use some of my leftover colors of occasionally, but I have been switching over to these. Some of these are from Michael, some from Blick, and some from Hobby Lobby. Besides the Unbleached Titanium White, I picked up so many colors. I'm not going to sit here and read them all out for you, but I will list them in the video description if you're all at all interested in what I chose. That's all the colors and why I don't want to sit here and read them all. Oh, and I got a new ruler, but it's over there. Have you gotten any new art supplies? I would love to hear what you've bought recently or something that you're hoping to get soon in the comments below. If you have not already, I have a button right there that you can click that will help you to keep up to date with all five of my new art videos. See, it's round, it has an orange arrow, made it really easy for you.